close the book now and say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Brother, good to have you with us, man. We have got a, all kind of special guests here today, friends and some that have come back uh, uh, in visiting and uh, to celebrate with us. You know, I, I got to adding up the years. Uh, this week, I think uh, October the 9th, will be the 20th anniversary of New Vision Church. Now you say, Pat, 20 years is nothing. I know church is 100, 100, whatever, but, but when you understand that the largest majority of churches, new churches, fold and close their doors within seven years. So would you give the Lord praise for, for the church still after 20 years is um, still, um, still going still going and, and going strong. You have your Bibles, I'm going to be in Luke 15 for just a few minutes. Uh, this week I was called on to, uh, to do a funeral for a friend of mine. I hadn't seen him in 41 years. So not only, and his mother, uh, Sister Francis, was 94 years old when she passed away. But these thoughts that I'm going to try to share with you this morning concern some of uh, what it was about. And that's about making memories. How many of you got a lot of good memories of, of things that's happened in your past? How many of you got some memories of bad things that happened in your past? Isn't the memories of goodness a lot better? Say amen if you think the good ones are better. Amen. Then why do we spend time on the bad ones? Huh? I, I believe God wants us to dwell on the things that brings our heart joy, brings our heart strength. Because folks... Uh, we have a lot to be thankful for today. Amen. We're, we have the, uh, the uh, well, let me read my scripture first, and then we'll, if you're in Luke chapter 15, say amen. amen. Verse 17 of the 15th chapter, And when he had came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's house have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I perish with hunger. Father, I thank you again. Thank you for this day that we come and my, 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 how the choir sung. My, how the specials have touched our heart. How the musicians played uh, such beautiful sounds, Lord God. I praise you, I thank you, and we're asking that you anoint your word and your word declares it won't return void. It will accomplish that that pleases you. I ask in the name that's above all names. In Jesus' name I pray. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Last week I was listening to, to the uh, musicians. And Janice was sitting beside me. I don't know if that's a requirement for a pastor's wife, but she does it every Sunday. And I leaned over because Sister Patty... There was a symphony of sounds coming out of that little thing over there. I heard flutes. I heard. I I just heard an angelic musician playing. And folks, I want to thank her for for because this has been a special memory for her this week. She finally turned thirty nine. <laughs> Amen. Church, don't you love our musicians? Give them praise. Uh, the Lord pray for our musicians. I was anticipating uh, getting to see Chris Mott again. I, I knew his brother somewhat with Van, did not know until Chris and I first met that he had, he had passed away. And uh, Van was a little bit older than Chris. Chris was just a high schooler or a senior when I came out of service. But we become buddies. And so I didn't, right when Roy called me and asked me could I do the graveside service, I started my memory bank. Do y'all do that when you haven't seen somebody in a while and you go, what my memories are of? And folks, he said, now, Pip, you can't share all our memories. I said, well, Chris, I got about four. I've got to at the graveside. He said, please don't, please don't. But it was a joyful time to, to see him and know that shortly after we became friends a couple of years, he went into the military and wound up spending the rest of his career in military and civil service and just now retired and is playing golf all he wants to. What a story, huh? 
That God has got a purpose and a place for all of us. Even when we don't see each other for years and years, if we allow, God will bless us. God bless Chris, and, and I can testify this morning, God's blessed me a lot more than I deserve. Amen? When I looked at it, I said, I remember us being on the roof at the president's house, and, and I was always the first one to get the tools out. He was the last one that put the tools up, and what a worker he was. I, my, I'm so happy you were with us today. What a blessing it is to see you. I, I remember the first time I met my father-in-law. I drove up to, in a van. Now, folks, in the, in the 70s, a dude in a van was just, oh, he was just one step away, so he should be in prison. And I remember the words, he won't, but I remember the words he said when he came out to me, to my window. He said, sir, folks, I knew it was serious. I'd never been called sir in all my life. Sir, would you move your van out of my driveway? You know something? You know what I did? I moved my cotton picking van. He scared me then and he scares me a little now. I thought all the, of, of my career and all my doings that Mr. Johnny Acock had played a major role in, in helping me in the decisions as I was being promoted. He gave me one rule and this goes through everything you do in life because the people you hang around with will, will denote things about you, right? He said, put good people around you because if you put idiots around you, you'll look like a... Now some of you say, well, you still look like an idiot. I made so many memories with him afterwards. We, I know we fished one bass tournament together. I vowed to never do it again because it was work when we started and work when we got through. I remember my mother-in-law that taught me the, the power of pleading the blood of our Savior. I, I remember some nights that, that were long that I would call her the next day and, and she taught me to plead the blood. And now we got Miss Lillian. And on Thanksgiving and Christmas and on special days and special times, she has become a major part of my memories. See, we've all got friends, haven't we, that we have special memories of. And sometimes those memories get away from us, and that's what happened to this young man. We probably, in, our, in, our, in the church history here, and we've, we've got a Brother Billy Floyd here this morning, who was the founding pastor of New Vision Church. Sister Bonnell gave him a lot of that success. Would you thank them for being here this morning? Amen. <laughs> Amen. And we were so hoping Sister Edith would be able to, to be here with this morning, but she fell yesterday and, and uh, is uh, very sore from that. And I want to highlight her for a second because she started at Holton. And, and, and folks, I started at Holton. I went there with Johnny Johnson because he was made to go and he needed a friend to be made to go with him. I remember in Sunday school rocking that old desk back in two waiting for the teacher, not knowing, not knowing that there were seeds being planted. See, folks, it didn't say that he wouldn't sow amongst the thorns. He wouldn't sow amongst the, the shallow ground. The soil went forth and sowed, and no matter what you think you might not be doing, if you're sowing seeds, you're doing the work of God. And I've had those memories come back to me over and over. Miss Edith was, was a, one of the members of, of Holton. Uh, along in the time I got drafted, she sent care packages. They, from that little church, they blessed not just me as a soldier, but others. And when they came to Westside with Brother Henry Johnson, she was there. And she was here at the founding of this church. We got her a little gift, and I'm going to get it to her maybe Monday. But she had memories of all three till it led to new vision. And folks, this is a place of vision. Amen? Now sometimes, I, as Brother Ray, Ward Ray would say out at, at Holden, he was there nearly 50 years, he said, Now Brother Pitt, our name is New Hope, but they have called us No Hope. Well, they, sometimes they have, well, our name is New Vision, but sometimes probably folks have said it's Blurred Vision. Isn't it amazing, even when our vision gets impaired, 
Even when things happen in our life to bring us discomfort and hurt, there's so many wonderful memories that it should overshadow anything that the enemy tries to... See, if the enemy's job, if you've done anything in your past, is to continually remind you of your past. Hear me, church, this morning. When he reminds you of his past, remind him of, of his future, amen. Hey, amen. I told Brother Joe Boatwright this morning, and I know Calvin different ones that deal with these kidney stones. And I, I thought, what an awesome thing it would be when God finally sends Lucifer to hell and give him in eternal kidney stones. Because folks, let me tell you something. On the birthing of kidney stones, there is gnashing of teeth. So it may happen. All this young man thought of was having a good time, getting in a place where limelight and life is going to be good. So dad, just give me what belongs to me and, and let me go out and do my sewing. We all know the story that in his dealings with what his father had given him as an inheritance, he squandered it. Don't you think the Father, our Heavenly Father, has given us a, such a great gift of salvation? And it is a gift. The pardon of our sin, the pardon of our a life that could have been decrepit, our father, the pardon of everything that we had ever done in our wretched life, God wiped it clean in one prayer. He cleaned us more than any other thing that could have been done by psychologists, by psychiatrists. When we go to the great physician to begin our new march with God, he cleans us and makes us pure and dress driven snow, amen. If you believe that, give him praise. <clears throat> the good news is he came to his senses. He came to his senses. Aren't you glad, Christians, that somewhere, and, and if you're saved this morning, you know where you was at when you got saved. You know what time it was just about at the date on it that God came into your life. Isn't that amazing? Why wouldn't you have that memory? I, I, can, I can, listen, I can take you to, to, into David's house, the chair, I was, or at least the, oh, the chair where we had, where I was sitting when I got saved. I can take you and count off the tiles in the floor there at Liberty Church of God Social Hall and show you where God called me to preach. Don't know why he did it, but he did it. And I remember being so pumped up. I had my confirmation. I, I knew that God had called me. How many of you know that God's called every one of us? Called us out of darkness into life. So I was so pumped, and I prayed, God, as I always do, Lord, anoint me that I'm a, I present your word with authority and power and conviction. So when I prayed that prayer and stood in the pulpit, folks, my shirt was already wet and I hadn't even opened my mouth. My knees were knocking and it sounded like two woodpeckers in the woods. I was scared to death and that these people helped birth me, they helped nurture me, they taught me, they loved me, and here I am going to tell them something about Jesus. <laughs> Don't even sound right, do it. And folks, I had my notes this message was going to go 45 minutes. And it may have went four to five minutes. And when I got through the clock still, 30 minutes to 12. And I'm thinking now I have messed up big time because I've got nothing else to say. Have y'all noticed that's changed some? Some of you say it, yes. Yeah. I'm very influential. Yeah. yeah. I was standing at the back door with my pastor. It was blessed because my pastor, he, he could talk 30 minutes on anything. So he filled in the blanks and we standing out at the, at the front of the church and how we greet and thank, everybody said thank you. Great job, great job, great job. And man, that, I'd never thought so many people would be lying to me. And the last brother to come out was Brother Tom Ellis and he wrapped his arm around me. He said, Brother Pat, everybody's got to start somewhere. <laughs> what memories? What memories? Now you think about it, church, when you got saved and you got yourself in line with God, and let me ask you this, have there been battles since you got saved? Say amen. 
Have there been victory since you got saved? A double amen. 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 What a, what a God we serve. That even in tragedy in our life, think about all the things that's happened that was darkness to you. And there's a Christian somewhere in that tragedy. They would be a, a ray of hope, a ray of peace, a ray of believing that nothing can stop what God has said he would do. Amen. Don't you bank on what the enemy said. Don't you bank on what the educated sometimes say in the seminary. I believe with all my heart, if God's told you that your family's going to be when you stand on that promise. Don't you give in. Well, they never going to do it. They will do it. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and give him praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I love this passage. And when he came to himself. See, when you come to the forks of road in your life, you've got to make your decision. Left or right. And folks, that gate is still straight, and that way is still narrow. This brother chose, chose the broad way. Did destruction come to him, church? Let me tell you something. You, you think about the worst thing you could have happen to you as far as a Christian. And understand that in the Jewish faith, for this young man to be feeding hogs and eating with the hogs was the most derogatory thing a Jewish boy could be doing. It was totally against their everything they believed. They, don't, they, they never gave away the place of the law where, where you couldn't eat pigs, amen. And folks, I believe this with all my heart. The enemy, if he can, wants you in the pig pen with him. But the Lord wants us through the straight gate and the narrow way. I want to be on that road, don't you? Let's, re let's correct that. I'm on that road. I want to stay on that road. That we can finally one day get to that celestial city and see our Lord. Now, folks, Paul says to be absent in the bodies, to be present with the Lord. Do y'all believe that? Now, don't you know that, that heaven erupts when some special saint comes into the city, right? The, listen, we ain't got but 10 minutes. So you can do this year or eight me or something, and we're going to stall it out. Yeah. Precious in the sight of the Lord, the death of his saints. It's, it's all recorded that when, when they enter into heaven, special things will happen. Let me ask you this. How many folks was at the cross when Jesus died? handful. He fed 5,000 men plus their families. He opened blinded eyes. He made the lame to walk. He saved the sinner and only a handful of folks was there to witness his death. Now let me ask you this. Was that mom there? What do you think happened in heaven when Mary died and went into the presence of heaven? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? I I guarantee you when Granny Molly went into, the, went into to heaven, there was a big celebration. I, I believe when my mom and dad went, there was a big celebration. But I can't imagine what heaven did when Mary, the mother of Jesus, walked into the portals of heaven for the first time. I've got a feeling every angel was singing. I've got a feeling every saint that was went before was singing and worshiping God into a place that the mother of God, the mother of the Savior, the mother of the King of Kings had graced the presence of heaven for the first time. Jesus had always been there. But here the mother comes. Boy, wouldn't that make a Mother Day message, huh? He came to his senses. You know what? America needs to come to its senses. We can blame the, the president, and I spent a good bit of time doing that. You know his name's in the Bible, it says abomination. I know for all you scholars, that's abomination. You let me have my way here a little bit. But you know something, church? You hear me? This is my little political ad. Ever who we have in the White House is directly by the Christians of this nation. Pat, I didn't vote. Listen here. 
Not only sometimes we, we didn't vote for them, we didn't vote. God is expecting us. God, if we want changes and want our nation to be what it needs, we don't need another president. We need another king, amen. We don't need another government official. We need another saint to step up and say, though he slay me, yet I will serve him, amen. There's going to come a time you need to be like this brother and come to your senses and know that we are the reason many times our family struggles. Let's live for Jesus. When he came to his senses and was coming home, his dad ran out to him. How many of you got special memories of your mom and dad that at some time or another they embraced you, either in struggles or whatever? I was coming home. I had been gone for a while, and actually... Uh, Richard Nixon got me out of Vietnam a week early by the shutting down, the beginning of the shutdown of the war. And I didn't tell my parents, and I had my brother to pick me up at the airport. He hadn't said anything. So we pull up in the, in the yard of our old home place in a little shotgun house, and, and I can still remember when I stepped out, had my uniform on, man, I was, and folks, you may not believe this, but I used to look like Doc. And some of you say, Doc ain't got a lot to look forward to. But I remember him coming, if we can get a song. I can remember my dad and mom. My mom was in behind him because mama had short legs and Doc, or daddy had, he had uh, long legs. And I still remember how he come. I couldn't even, I couldn't, I couldn't even take a step. He done engulfed me. And he didn't live much longer after that. But I'll never forget that he welcomed me home in a way that only a father can. See, God the Father wants to not only welcome you to this 20th year of this church in a homecoming, but he wants to welcome you into an eternal home going. Folks, I'm not worried about the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. And he's coming soon. Let those memories of the good things engulf you. Remember the time that you got saved. Remember those special moments of, of all the wonderful things that could flood our soul. I choose to remember the good things. Pet you don't remember, I do remember those things. And it's one thing to remember, but another thing to dwell on. So when those things in my heart try to come up, I start flooding Myself with the good memories. Good things will happen if you'll let it. Would you stand with me? Now, was everybody happy that this young man came home? What a homecoming he had. Kill the fatted calf. Put the ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. But there was another brother there that had always been good. Had always done things the way good sons are supposed to. And he was mad because his dad embraced that one that was, had been wretched. In blood thicker than water, church. See, no matter what our sons and daughters go through, they're still our sons and our daughters. And he said, son, we're celebrating because he was dead and now he's alive. But Dad, I've always been here. I've always done the right thing. I've always, and I've never even had a goat to offer up to my friends. And he, and, and he plainly told him that. Oh, this is yours anyhow. See, our Lord says, you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. If you want something from the Father, ask Him. Ask Him with every head bowed and every eye closed. And maybe God spoke to your heart this morning. But Brother Pat, I, I feel a drawing. There's something happening in, inside of me. I want to be something for Jesus, Father's time. Brother Pat, would you just pray for me? While everybody's head's bowed and every eye's closed, and you'd like me to pray for you, would you just lift your hand up real quickly and put it back down? 
Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. All over this house. Folks, it's time to quit going to church and let's start having church and start being the church. Father, you saw the hands. You know the hearts. And, and Lord, I, I believe if I'd ask a little more, there'd be more hands to come up. But God, I'm asking you right now for those hearts that that didn't raise their hand maybe in a physical way, but raised their hand from their heart. God, I ask for all these. Lord, you know our needs before we ever speak them. You know the desires of our heart. David said, you know my down sittings, my uprisings, even my thoughts that are far off. God knows you. God knows you this morning. Please allow him to make your life nothing but precious memories. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. If you want to pray as they sing this song, and then we're going to go have a great meal together. If you want to pray real quickly, come. Jesus. 